It's a pleasure for me to make the presentation of the members of the table. But I go speak in Portuguese and my interpreter translate for us. Okay? Uh, I want uh, Humberto Sherman. Humberto. Esse é o grupo de Rotary em ação para a erradicação da hepatite. This is Humberto Sherman and he's from the Rotary Reaction Group uh, against hepatitis. Diretor, diretor Paul Major. Adam Roberts, CEO. Eduardo e governador Nadir Zacarias, à esquerda, do distrito 4610, São Paulo, Brasil. I'd also like to introduce um, Paul Major, Adam Roberts, Eduardo, and Governor Nadir Zacarias from District 4610, from São Paulo, Brasil. Nós gostaríamos de agora agradecer a presença de todos neste workshop e desejar sucesso à mesa que fará a sua explanação. I would like to thank all of you for being here at this breakout session and I would like to um, wish the people participating in this session a lot of success. Thank you. Obrigado. Well, good afternoon. Before we start, uh, we have to announce that this session will be filled. So, if anyone does not wish to be filled, they can go now. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, welcome one and all uh, to this session of the afternoon. This rag was uh, started two years ago. We realize it's taken a lot of time. Two years ago, when we brought this course to Rotary, Rotary's Association. Okay, can you hear better now? Yeah. Sorry. We started two years ago when we first started to call this course to Rotary, the Rotary at, at the São Paulo Congress, which I can see many faces were probably there to see first right there. Since then, we've obviously been working um, on getting official rate, rate status. Many people here have helped us along the way. Uh, I know many people have been patient with us. Many people have expressed a desire to help us, and we thank you for that. Uh, before, before we start, uh, we would like to go through, if possible, the agenda for today. Um, you know, obviously, we would like to thank Rotary, because obviously, through the two years, two, through the two years of this process, uh, obviously it has to undergo a certain scrutiny. But we realise obviously that it was necessary to pass all through that. And now here we are, officially to announce the rag. Thank you for that. So we'd like to propose a, an agenda for you this afternoon. Uh, perhaps we can show you now. This is the agenda we'd like to propose for the first meeting. Concept of the RAC, obviously the principle behind it. The intentions, uh, mission, and goals of the RAC for hepatitis eradication. RAC for hepatitis eradication structure organisation. Uh, the role of a hepatitis RAC of each hepatitis RAC, each regional RAC. Sorry. Selection of regional hepatitis RAC leaders. Um, where we'll have a round of open microphone for each attendee. First actions, programs and campaigns. Uh, first countries to eradicate, some big news there. Fundraising and grants. And the next RAC meetings. That's what we'd like to propose to talk about here today. 
So without any further ado, I'd like to present you to Mr. Humberto Silva, who's going to be the next speaker. Thank you very much.
I was blessed. I think I was blessed to find it in time. My only way now to say thank you to God for giving me that blessing is to try and do something about it, to try and uh, change the situation the world has concerning this terrible disease. Because up to now, as strangely as it may sound, the health politics that have been put into practice by the health authorities everywhere in the world, those convenient, those coward, those inhumane health politics have kept all of the hepatitis patients from being diagnosed practically. And the situation today is the same this in this country, even now, our new CEO, before we came here, he, he was trying to delete, he can confirm it, he was trying to delete that, uh, that slide and I asked I apologize for showing it here. I know how, how delicate and, uh, and sad that day was for the Americans and for the whole world. But we had 3,000 people dying that day, right? Roughly. And we have every day other 3,000 people dying of the hepatitis C in the world. If we remain silent here for one minute, I'm not going to ask you to do it. But if we did, two people would have lost their lives during this minute that we stayed silent. So is this an absurd situation or not? Is this something that doesn't get inside one? Especially one who has seen itself in his flesh. So that all led us to create an association and to make a, make a vow that we would dedicate to the last of our forces to advocate the cause, to promote campaigns and to try and change this dreadful, this terrible situation the hepatitis has in the world today. Because as I, as I said, as nobody feels any symptom, practically, when the first one comes, the only solution one has is to have one's liver transplanted, if one is lucky enough. So we created an association, and then two, three years later, we brought the course to Rotary, which by its turn embraced the course, by its turn gave us such a support and paid such an attention to it, to a point that today in Brazil, in South America, especially in our country, Brazil, this has become the number one cause for Rotary Clubs. In the last year, we managed to get about 1,000 clubs involved in actions against hepatitis in Brazil and in some South American countries. What we found we could do effectively, and this was easily and fastly seen by the Rotarians, was to use the rapid test for detecting those who are infected. Performing those tests all around the country. And those tests cost one dollar per head. And that one dollar can save a life. And that's the base of our project. That's, that's the, the pillar of the plan, of the idea that led us to create this Rotarian Action Group for Hepatitis Eradication, which is having its first official meeting this afternoon, today, in Atlanta. So, we'd like to speak to you today about how this REC, this Rotarian Action Group for Hepatitis Eradication, is going to be structured, not only here, where its headquarters are going to be, in Washington, D.C., but all over the world. Because not only for the necessity of the cause, but for the accept, acceptance, for the, the way the Rotarians have embraced the cause, for the liking our Rotary has taken for the cause, we see that this project is going to grow. We can foresee, as we saw it with our own eyes in Brazil, in a matter of one year, the absurd, incredible growth this project had. And one day, we believe it firmly, 
with the help of God, we will be seeing the same example, the same situation as we saw yesterday when Bill Gates spoke about a, a polio and all of the success that this long fight against disease brought to the head. One day, maybe we'll not be here, maybe we'll be somewhere else if a future life exists. But one day, this will be the situation forever by this big C and all kinds in the world, especially because the world has recently declared about one year ago that all forms are, they can be eradicated. All forms of the diseases. So the challenge is finding the people who are infected, finding them, and then giving them treatment and cure. Thank you very much indeed for coming, and I will pass the floor to our new CEO, who would like to introduce Mr. Adam Roberts, the newcomer to the group, who is going to help us during this, this fierce fight that we have ahead. Thank you very much. Yes, when, when Umberto says new CEO, he means literally three days on the job now. So, uh, so by way of introduction, uh, let me just say thank you all for, for being here, and thank you for including me. I just want to, uh, if I could take a point of personal privilege, uh, say that I've worked for 26 years in nonprofit advocacy in Washington, D.C., doing education and media training, government affairs, lobbying Congress, legislation on a variety of issues. Uh, but I don't think in all of those years of doing presentations and talking across the globe and indeed across the United States, I've ever felt so inspired as I have the past few days here. It's obviously my first Rotary Conference, and I can't tell you um, how energized I feel seeing everybody in all of the different breakout sessions and, of course, the plenary sessions, and how excited everybody is to be involved in all the different causes and all the different Rotarian action groups. So, um, so I thank you for letting me be a part of this, obviously, to Umberto specifically for inviting me to join the cause. Um, it's also interesting for me because I feel like I have a lifetime of learning, and I'm very interested in learning new things, and after 26 years of doing the same thing, uh, it all got a bit stale, but hepatitis is something that I must say I didn't know very much about. And people often ask me now that I've come onto this project, if after 26 years of working for one thing, I'm looking for my next job, or I'm looking for my last job. And at this point in my life, and knowing what this campaign involves, and the fact that the World Health Organization has determined that by 2030, in 13 years, hepatitis can indeed be eradicated across the face of the earth, I think this is indeed going to be my last job. I'm going to do this for 13 years and be a part of what you all are doing, what Alberto and the team is doing, and get a victory in this one, and then retire because my wife wants to have a farm with 40 cows that we rescue. So, um, so that's, that's next. But first, we're going to get rid of hepatitis, starting with hepatitis C. And I don't know if everyone's had a chance to come by our booth in the exhibit hall, but please do because you can get tested there for hepatitis C if you haven't yet. It takes literally 30 seconds to get the test and about 10 minutes to get the result. And part of that is because everyone should indeed know we should indeed get tested because it can be latent inside us for years, for decades, and we often don't know that we have hepatitis C until it's too late, until you have liver failure, cirrhosis of the liver, or cancer. So it's really important to get tested, but also part of this project which has been so effective in Brazil already, where a million people were tested through that rapid test, shows how quickly, easily, and inexpensively it can be done. And if you can have all of those things, have a, pro a project that is quick and easy and inexpensive, and most importantly effective, you can inspire governments and foundations and individuals around the world to be a part of the campaign and make sure that people get tested across the globe. So now that we have the Hepatitis Zero campaign, as part of the Rotarian Action Group on Hepatitis Eradication, we are going to work to do the following things. Obviously, advocacy. We need to talk about this issue and why it's so important. I realize that most people, as I say, don't understand Hepatitis C, don't know that it's a problem. But in fact, there are twice as many people in the world right now living with Hepatitis C than there are living with HIV. And most people still think about HIV being this prevalent killer across the globe but twice as many people have hepatitis C than have HIV, and more importantly, as many people die of hepatitis C as die of tuberculosis. 
more people die of hepatitis C as die of HIV or even malaria. So while so much attention has been paid on those diseases, obviously very important, and those disease rates, prevalence, and deaths are coming down, the problem with, with um, hepatitis C is increasing. And it's increasing because it's the silent killer. People don't have those symptoms until it's too late. So we must have this engaged advocacy effort to try and educate and talk about why it's so important. And that's why we have the group here today and this week. And then from that, we start our actions and our campaigns to ensure that we're actually, actually getting into government offices, nonprofits, and groups like the Rotary Club to engage people in this effort. And then from that, hopefully fundraising activities that allow the funds to be raised in order to solve the problem. And as Humberto said, we saw with Bill Gates and governments, the European Commission, so many causes, people, and entities got together and donated 1.2 billion, or pledged at least 1.2 billion to try to finish off polio once and for all in the next three years. We have to have the same kind of effort to work on hepatitis C, and that really is what we're starting with this effort. It is, as I said, inexpensive to test people. It can be as little as a dollar, but then treatment costs are gonna change depending on where you are. So now that we have the Rotarian Action Group that works on this issue, we want to engage local clubs around the world to be partners with us in this effort. So we have the Rotarian Action Group on hepatitis eradication as part of this hepatitis zero campaign. We have the president and Umberto and a senior team and the senior team is indeed global, people from Brazil, the United States, Egypt. But what we need next, and where you all can really help, is establishing these regional rags, these regional groups, where we can get people on the ground helping us, helping us identify places that are needing this kind of work most, where the funds can be raised in country the easiest, and I can tell you from being at that booth this week so far, people from Malaysia, Singapore, Uganda, Gabon, all across the globe wanting help. And it's not just Rotarians wanting help. We've had people coming up to us from the United States government saying that they're working with governments in Central and East Asia, places like Uzbekistan, people in Pakistan. They want this work to be done. The problem is because there's been a lack of advocacy on this effort for so long, it hasn't been done thus far. So we're hoping that now that we have this significant presence, we'll really be able to roll up our sleeves and get down to the business of doing the work we need to do to make this victory against hepatitis. So in terms of getting to hepatitis zero, which of course is the goal, we want to eradicate all forms of viral hepatitis, focusing first on hepatitis C, because that is where we know there is an oral treatment that is effective in curing the virus. And then we also want to work to ensure that we can prevent the occurrence of new cases, especially for hepatitis C, but also hepatitis B, where you can have vaccines in infancy, but we need to make sure it's being done more and more prevalently across the globe. So what actions will we be doing to guide our work forward? Well, first we do need to assemble the structure for how we do this, and that's where, again, all of you can be enlisted to help our efforts help us create regional RAG structures, help us create work in your country where we have the protocol, we have the process already known, and we can help you with that to make sure that it's being done on the ground where you live. But then we also need to learn about the hepatitis situation in different countries because it is more prevalent in some countries than others, uh, in the Middle East, in um, Western countries in Africa, excuse me, and in Central and East Asia, it is much more prevalent than elsewhere. But we also know that hepatitis C exists, for example, here in the United States, especially in poor states like West Virginia, in states where there is dramatic drug use, like opioid use in that state. And when people are exchanging needles, injecting drugs, and not doing so in a sanitary way, hepatitis C will be on the rise. So we first must understand what is the prevalence within a different country and a different region of the world. And secondly, what percentage of the people are going undiagnosed? We know that this is the biggest problem with hepatitis C, is that people are not getting tested, so they're not getting diagnosed, and if they're not getting diagnosed, they're obviously not getting treated. Next, what rapid tests exist in different countries? The rapid test that we're doing here at the booth is, as I say, easy, safe, effective, and inexpensive, but in some countries, because you have a rigorous testing protocol imposed by the government, it's not going to be as effective in terms of ease 
or cost, but it might be perfectly uh, effective if you can afford it. So we need to make sure that we are getting rapid tests across the globe as cheaply as possible to ensure that people will actually do the tests and then get the treatment. Once the test is approved, as I say, we need to get, um, get the treatments provided, and that's a question of what medicines are available and what is the cost for those medicines. In some countries, government health care will provide all of the funding that is needed to make sure that people who test positive can get treated. Obviously, it doesn't do much good if we can't get access to the cure when a cure exists if we know we're positive for hepatitis C. But here in the United States, where in some countries it might cost a $10 or $100 to get treated, it could literally cost tens of thousands of dollars for a treatment for hepatitis C. And for someone who's not on a full health insurance plan here in America, that is obviously going to be cost prohibitive. So we need to make sure we understand not only how to get people tested, but how to get them cured. Which takes us to the next part about how we cover the treatments and whether the government already has the new medicines that we need in order to take care of the people who test positive. So what we want to do as we push forward with everyone is first make sure we're performing the rapid tests to make sure everybody gets tested and promote them through the Rotary Clubs in different countries around the world. We also want to talk to the media and make sure we're getting the word out about why this is so important and uh, make sure that people are equipped to talk about this issue so that we can get to people and let them know that A, this is a potential problem, B, there must be a test, and C, if you do get tested, you want to make sure that you get the cure you need to rid yourself of this viral disease. And then also we need to work with different governments. As I say, I've worked in Washington, D.C. for two decades, and I know what it's like to try and deal with Congress, but there are many governments around the world that are going to want to avail themselves of the new technology, the medical technology that is needed to ensure that their population, their citizens, are safe from hepatitis C. And so we need to know which governments are going to be most willing to work with us and what is required of the health ministry in those different countries in order to ensure that people can tested. And then once we do that, we can actually advocate for the inclusion of hepatitis to be free of charge, the treatments to be free of charge for people who test positive, and then ultimately work together as Rotarians to rid the world of this disease, as I say, by 2030. And I just want to close by saying I, I had sent an email to a friend who reached out and asked what I was doing now that I left my former job, and literally one hour ago she replied and she said, I wanted to say good on you for working on the hepatitis project. My beloved father died of liver cancer from undetected hepatitis C in 2015. The doctor thinks he got it in the Korean War decades ago. I know it's rampant in many parts of the world, especially Asia. So obviously it touched Umberto and that's how we came to be here today. It's touched a friend of mine and surely it's going to touch someone in this room or someone you know, so it's important that we all work together to rid the world of hepatitis before too long. Thank you very much. The touch regarding this hepatitis cause is always blessed by God. And, uh, you know, some things we, or rather most things, are not for us to understand in this existence, but and as I took it, I took the disease as being a mission when it came to me. So I witnessed so many coincidences, coincidences that happened every day, <clears throat> every time we were trying to advocate for this cause. And we'll keep on doing it, we'll keep on insisting it, we'll keep on growing it till I repeat the point <coughs> me. when we finally see hepatitis <coughs> and then all forms of the disease being eradicated from the face of the earth. I'm going to close on, uh, on our part here and I'd like your attention to see a video, very short one, that's being used as a symbol for our campaign, which is a uh, campaign that has basically uh, the mission of identifying the infected ones by 
giving them a fingerprint. But, and then after the video, we'll share with you the bombastic plan that we have, which is already in the hands of two ministers of health in the world, for them to start the first countries ever to have hepatitis C eradicated, right? So all of this simply because there's nothing more important than life. your opportunity to perhaps tell us how you'd like to or how you feel able to contribute to um, the reg with coming up with your own project. Um, I realise, you know, obviously perhaps you haven't had time to think about this, but maybe some of you had in your own country your own, own idea of, of how perhaps you need or how you could contribute with something like this. So does anyone have anything to offer in terms of what they would like to do? Do we have anyone, um, could someone help with the mic perhaps, if we could get the mic to that gentleman? Or perhaps you'd want to come to the mic, <laughs> which is easier. Hi, uh, my name is Sanjay Deshpande. I am the Rotary Foundation Chair for District 7910. Um, several years ago, when I was in Pennsylvania in District 7, 7430, my club undertook a project to educate Rotarians in the district about this disease. Uh, we had learned that uh, CDC has recommended that everybody born, uh, essentially a baby boomer, I believe it was 46 to 64, 1946 to 64, should get tested for hepatitis C. And given that most Rotarians in that district were in the same age, we launched a campaign to educate clubs. We went around with the American Labor Foundation to talk to clubs, to educate them. And then we had a screening event. In the US, the approved test is, one of the approved tests we know is made by Orosure. And I think that costs $10.50. And we funded the test uh, from a district grant. And uh, we finished that project. Three years later, I was in another club in Massachusetts, where I am now, and we did the same thing, went around to about 20 clubs, and another district grant, and did the education, did the same order show test. Uh, but this time our screening event attracted only 11 people. Uh, so I think it's very important to keep doing this. Uh, the thing that is very discouraging is that the treatment is so expensive, in the U.S. and uh, in many cases you need an advocate for the people who are identified sure. or diagnosed as suffering. You need an advocate to get them the treatment through some kind of funding source. So I think this is a very worthy cause and I'm all for it. And if you have not already done so, get the American Liberal Foundation involved here yeah, because they do want. And I do want our CEO to be a Rotarian next. <laughs> Three month deadline for you to be a Rotarian. <laughs> 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 
it's up to you. You, you, you can come along with the forms afterwards, okay? <laughs> now, thank you very much for that. I mean, obviously, what we're looking for as well, we're all open to all potential new members as well of the rank. You know, if people want to come along with the project, because obviously, I'm, I'm sure, uh, speaking for the president, I'm sure he would welcome new input, uh, new blood, and I'm sure uh, Adam and CEO would also welcome that. Um, come along with some ideas, especially if you've already done testing here in the States or anywhere else, um, obviously. You know, so anyone who is already a member of the RAC or uh, would like to obviously become a member of the RAC, uh, we're looking for contributions and participation. Anyone else like to say something else? Please. So perhaps you'd like a quick overview first, then we'll, we'll, we'll get one or two more people from the mic. You want to come up? So we do that first, then we'll get some, some more people from the floor. Okay? Yeah, um, <coughs> it's going to be explained very simply. Um, as when we speak about hepatitis, the first thing that comes to a person's mind is that regular, old, traditional hepatitis that stays in the person for one month gives the person yellow eyes and uh, fatigue, etc. That one is the hepatitis A. That one is a form of hepatitis which is transmitted by water, contaminated water. Uh, before, doctors used to advise uh, patients to stay, um, to stay at home, not do any uh, effort, uh, and, and, and to eat a lot of uh, sweet chocolates, etc. Today, it's known that neither the, the rest, nor the chocolate or sweet, were necessary. So, the, that disease simply comes and uh, evolves in the body and cures by itself. The world still has an issue with that one, but that's an issue to be dealt with by uh, resolving the, um, the sanitary problems uh, with, with uh, hygiene, etc. Now, the real hard ones are the B and C forms. Those are blood-borne diseases that are normally transmitted by blood contact. Most people that got hepatitis C, as I did, got it by receiving a blood transfusion. Uh, and the form B of the disease is still passed through sex, sexual contact uh, relationship. There are other forms, the letters go all the way to the letter G, but the other ones are still new uh, appearances of the virus and uh, they are not really raising much um, concern in, in the health, uh, to the health authorities. So basically, what we need to combat, what we need to tackle, would be the hepatitis B and C, which are transmitted by blood. Yes. É, boa tarde. Eu não falo inglês, tá? Posso falar, perguntar em português, tudo bem? And maybe if we have the help of uh, the translator. <laughs> Could you translate it for us, please? Não? Não. Não, é... Eu posso falar eu vou falar, contar uma pequena história fazer uma relação com o que eu vou falar. Eu entrei no Rotary faz sete anos e eu convivi na minha infância com pessoas com poliomielite e vim a descobrir que existia polio no Rotary. E me envolvi na campanha da, da polio e procuro colaborar e ajudar. E na nossa, na nossa conferência que teve agora, passado, o Marcelo Reich, que é o nosso coordenador da polio é, nos mostrou alguns perigos que a polio ainda corre em função da taxa vacinal ser baixa, inclusive no Brasil, que já está erradicada há 20 anos. Você pode esperar para o 
campaign in the Lincoln history. history. Inclusive ontem, aquele membro da, da União Europeia, não sei se perceberam, ele realmente citou isso na Europa, a taxa vacinal anda baixa e com o risco da polio voltar. Eu queria só citar isso. Agora é o seguinte, com, é, com referência à hepatite, eu não sei como são alguns países, né? Você quer falar? Não, eu falo que por você, no Brasil, por exemplo, que a gente poderia adotar, a nível de outro de conscientização, pegando o gancho do que o Marcelo falou, é que no Brasil todas as pessoas que vão ser admitidas para um trabalho profissional fazem um, um exame médico obrigatório, tanto de entrada como de saída. E nós poderíamos fazer uma portaria, coisa desse tipo, no Ministério do Trabalho, para que fosse exigido o teste da hepatite. Tá? Eu acho que seria viável, que é uma forma fácil, de que a sugestão é essa.
So this is already taking place in two cities in Brazil, and we have we have a project in the hands of the Minister of Health of uh, São Tomé in Africa and in San Kitts here. What I would like to ask you, my fellow protesters, is that you could represent this idea at your clubs, that you could present our project at your club and get your clubs involved in our global grant project. With ten dollars only, we could perhaps we could eradicate the disease from the face of the country. And that's a tremendous achievement. People have been talking about this possibility, but no one has even come close to it. And Rotary is starting that very eradication project. So, an invitation to you, if you could, come and join the program and take the program to your club. We would be so much glad, so much grateful, and our project would, would grow. So, let's continue with the discussions and our opinions. Sending 
uh, the ones who are interested, all the material, including videos, etc., so that it can be shown at the class. Terry Weiner, Plano, Texas. We're north of Dallas, uh, Plano Metro Club. So we have our own foundation in our club. We have about $450,000 in our foundation. Our foundation is devoted to have us, a lot of us, seven of us are here for our club looking at different options for our money. Uh, we represent all our money on the spot. Uh, I was assigned to come here. And I think I'm very interested in um, taking back my club. But what I wanna, what I want like to know is, is it better one of three things. Is it better for our club to be tackled doing the testing in our, our fair city? Is it better to donate a bunch of money to medical research to get the cost of 1050 down? Is it better to give money to your group and let you do what you want with it? What would be the good use of our money for your cause? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's my, my view about it. I think that, you know, in many cases when we speak about diseases, uh, the United States are so far ahead, so involved, but that's not the situation when we talk about hepatitis C, where here in this country we find that at least half of the infected are not diagnosed yet. So you've got both things to do. Um, the support of foreign projects, you know, starting, for example, with that uh, situation for eradicating the disease completely, as we are starting to do in the, in the Caribbean and African countries. And you have your local work to do here in the States. Now, one thing that we need to pay attention and fight here is to approve a new, efficient, rapid test, something affordable. Because the one that you guys have here costs over 10 he said ten dollars, but it cost us about twenty. So uh, I mean, the ones that we use back home and in several countries cost only one dollar. And once you go in quantities, it, that price diminishes. So basically, you would have a uh, little thing so far. Can I ask one follow-up? So my bringing back this message to our board of directors for our foundation, other people are bringing back a similar message for some other great causes. Here in Franken. So, can you give me, aside from this great brochure, why pick your cause? Because, firstly, our cause, which is the world's biggest health problem today, as put it by the World Health Organization Secretary, Mrs. Margaret Chen, is a cause that needs our attention for fixing it because it reflects a long last, a long period of injustice done against people who carry the virus. The situation that we have today, Terry, is that the governments, they are being cowards, they are being omiss to that particular Because they know, the governments do know that the situation is that the infected are there in this country. Infected with the virus, but why do they bring it to their to their to their desk? Leave it for for later if the disease stays so longer in a person. So that's a terrible injustice to leave somebody dying without the help of that very person. I didn't have myself for me. After I found that I had the virus, they gave it, they gave myself back to me. Then you know, ninety-nine percent of a person's maintenance is due to that person, is due to oneself. That's coward to know that somebody is infected and not let the one go and seek treatment. That's one reason. And the other is the easiness that, and, and the cheapness, if, I, if the word exists, uh, to which we can go and do something about it. The solution is in our hands. I dare say that very hardly we would find such an enormous cause with half a billion people infected in the world where we could go and make a difference. I hope that answers. Thank you. Thank you. Can I?
can I just add one thing to that to that answer? You know, obviously each club is going to have you know different issues of importance to the people on the boards and that different ways they want to use their money. One thing I always like to look at is efficacy. You know, how measurable and effective a project that is funded is going to be. And so the one thing that I think is particularly attractive about what we're trying to do and what we're really just starting to do is take what they did in Brazil and replicate it globally. So if you take a country like St. Kitts, a small island nation in the Caribbean, there's 56,000 people on the island. 56,000 people at $10 a head to test and provide treatment means that for a half a million dollars, we can treat the entire country as sort of a pilot project, a test to see is it, does it work and then can we replicate it elsewhere. And so, and I'm just making this up, if you were to, for example, say that 25% of what you all hold is going to go toward this project, then I need five clubs to do the same thing and we can eradicate hepatitis C from an entire nation and then keep doing that throughout the globe. So, you know, as I say, we're really just starting the, the nuts and bolts of the structure of the project, but if we can keep in touch when we're ready to go, that's exactly the kind of resource we need to tap into. And just looking around the room and seeing people shaking their heads yes, it seems that we can easily put together groups of clubs that want to be the club that was the one who funded the eradication of hepatitis in Madagascar, in St. Kitts, in Uganda. So that, that would be my way to go. We just need a little time to get ready to implement it on the ground. I'm Wilfrey. I'm coming from Benin. Benin is a French-speaking country. So if you love, allow me to speak in French, I will speak it a lot. But if not, I will say a few. I can say, good job. You are doing a very good job. We need information as far as this disease is concerned. Absolutely. Specifically in Africa. So what we've done for polio, we can do the same for this disease. I'm president of my club. We are a member of District 9102. And I'm also a president of an NGO. And we deal with uh, blood pressure, telemedicine, uh, diabetes, and this disease. And we are planning a campaign in October. So it will be my pleasure to invite you to communicate to propose solutions among Rotterdam also, and also for people. Thank you. Thank you. Taking into consideration all the state prisons, uh, and we have a, we, we've approached or we are applying to do it through Rotary Foundation Global Grant. Fortunately, a club here in the US, North Carolina, uh, has accepted to be the international partner. We are going to start the process by the time I get, when I get back from this other convention. Our great one big challenge we have is the availability of vaccine for the intervention. I don't know if it's going to be possible for this uh, 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 group to help in providing that vaccine there. If it's going to be possible, I will uh, really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. I mean, obviously, it's something we can be looked at. I mean, obviously, afterwards, maybe we could reach out to you. Okay. All right. About the project. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jude Doctora, although I'm not a doctor. 
I come from the Philippines, uh, District 3850. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say that this is a, a very laudable project. Probably the, the second gift that Rotary can, can offer to the world. But I'm uh, just curious, uh, based on your experience in Brazil, uh, how much does it cost to treat one patient? Uh, the reason why I'm asking that is because uh, you know, testing and treatment are two different things. We can test all the people and then if we cannot provide treatment or we cannot find a way to provide treatment, we don't want people running around knowing that they have hepatitis C and there's nothing that they can do because they cannot afford a treatment. That would, I think, would be a form of psychological torture. So I was just wondering if, in your experience in Brazil, how much is the cost per patient? Thank you. Sorry, I answered that. Uh, that's a technical. Yeah, you are absolutely right. The uh, this effective uh, medicine we were talking about that were released about three years ago here in the States, uh, made by a company called Gilead, and uh, the medicine itself called, being called Sofaldi. And that was a breakthrough in the treatment of the disease, but it created uh, such a, an indignation from the patients because uh, it was brought to the market at a cost of $1,000 a pill, right? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the patient would need to take about 86 of those pills and uh, the treatment cost $86,000. That's how the thing started. Then the price dropped to, to what is now about $35,000. But obviously, the social security system here, the Medicaid, Medicare, they cover most of treatment in the country, about 85, 90% of the treatment. The case in our country uh, is much better. So we are a privileged country in Brazil, as strange as it may sound, because we have a health uh, uh, system that covers for each and every treatment. Right? So the government doesn't need to pay something, but not the, the citizen. Um, now the thing is, from that initial $80,000 that the medicine cost at the beginning, it's down even to a fraction of the price to date. Because Gilead has negotiated deals um, with the um, third world countries, enabling them to buy the pills at $1,000 instead of the $80,000 that it cost again. So, there again, uh, uh, it gets the theory of the Americans uh, that say that they are um, uh, they, they are banking all of that uh, treatment elsewhere. But at least that's a way for the people who can't afford it to have treatment. And for the previous uh, question uh, regarding the vaccines, our intention for vaccines distribution and also for medicine distribution is to link the, the people who will make them with the rotary clubs that we have. We are planning to form a big and enormous group and link the necessity to the availability, right? And that's why we need you to compose with us. Shweb Masad from uh, Rotary Club Hyderabad, Pakistan, District 3271. Uh, some parts of uh, my country have got almost hepatitis as 10%, as high as 10% of the population. <coughs> And uh, uh, almost half of it is B and C. What I I know that uh, the screening tests are different for each type. So you know you cannot screen for all hepatitis in one shot. So how can we go about it more efficiently? Because you know when we talk about screening, screening itself is a difficult job in this thing. Number two, two thing is, uh, is the reason why hepatitis B and C are prevalent in um, our part of the world is because of blood transfusion and you know, all. so advocacy might be one thing that we should do just as we done it for AIDS. 
So what I'm saying is uh, screening and advocacy both are needed. So I'm sure you will be working on these two areas where we can, you know, be of help. And uh, for that reason, I'll come to the stall and then and, and go from there. Thank you. Thank you. I would say that um, uh, by coincidence, we were uh, sought by the people from the CDC just yesterday at the end of the convention here. And they told us that they are starting a big project in your country, in Pakistan, and they invited us to be part of that project. So we already have a meeting with them uh, to pursue that possibility. Right? And you are right, the screening part of it is actually uh, troublesome, but we have managed in our country to get the uh, nurse students to come and take part, because as they do their work, it counts as points for them in their education history, they get, they get credits for doing this and they do it for free. And this is what seemed to us as something very difficult to put together. Actually, it's something very simple. We have here Eduardo, who's, who's the general in, uh, in getting... How many people have you, you got uh, as a volunteer in Brazil? very easily and we have found that everywhere we can get their workforce very easily and that's the strength of the program right and, and now for the screening method and, uh, and, and the tests there is a new one that comes being good for both of the diseases it's not approved yet but it's on the way right yes good evening uh, this is Hashem uh, from Rotary Club of Thamundi Central uh, Bangladesh, District 3281. Edward is here. Uh, we attended the Sao Paulo the Brazil Convention and uh, we took the project very seriously to our district and in our country. Uh, we started working and continuously we are working in our RCC. There are uh, approximately 2,000 uh, members and it's a very poor village. And uh, we started from the awareness building, awareness building, screening, vaccination, and treatment. These four things we are doing over there. Until then, we we have uh, done with the 900 of the population, 2,000. And our finding is uh, almost four four percent are having positive, B positive. 96 percent are under vaccination program. What do you do? At the same time, when, when, while we are doing the screening, getting negative, we are going for the vaccination program immediately, and those who are getting positive, we are taking them separately for the treatment, and you'll be astonished to know that probably most of you know about homeopathy medicine. It gives a very good treatment. You said we got 4% of the patients out of 900 liter, they are getting cured. Now, uh, and the cost for the screening is $1.5 in our country. And for vaccination, it is almost $26 average. So, uh, we have uh, calculated it's almost $27 per person we are spending for vaccination and screening. And for the treatment is different. It's a different chapters. We are getting so many volunteer doctors and the, they're giving service to these people. The question is, uh, we are doing this from the club level. Our club members are contributing $27 and $28 per person. And we have, to, we have taken care of 900 still last week. And it's a continuous process, it will continue till we are finishing uh, 2,000 of the members. And with the same project, 
we started in Bangladesh and there are some other class clubs in our Bangladesh. They are also taking the projects, but scatteredly. Uh, my two questions. Oh, one good good news I will give you. This project this year has got the best treatment award in Bangladesh. Three two eight one, three two eight two. The best projects. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Two question. Uh, how we can? What is the mechanism? I think you have designed so many policies. We can work very intensively with the local clubs in Bangladesh, and at the same time, how we can be uh, together with the other countries so that we can get a strong footage for the separatist zero program to eradicate it from the world. Two perspectives. Second question is we can uh, globally how we can get the uh, uh, linkages and cooperation so that we can make it more bigger and intensive. So yeah, I think what we need right now is sort of ambassadors in each country at the district level to do projects for the entire area. And so obviously you are a perfect candidate to do that. And then we can put together all the materials that you need, come do a presentation if need be, to all the clubs in the area, and then hopefully roll out the testing program in that area. So what we need first is your details to volunteer to be our ambassador for that area. I have every details to be in the world though. He's having every year, last year also, he got the information from us. We are with him, well he's also with us. My name is Yao uh, from Rotary Club of Akala Morning, District 9102. I have already volunteered to be an ambassador uh, since uh, Brazil the last two years. At a point, uh, Silva, Roberto Silva, wrote to me somewhere in March this year. Uh, asking me of my willingness to be uh, truly an ambassador. I responded positively to it, but I haven't had any response yet for over the last three months. I hope uh, communication will continue so we know what we are doing. And now my issue is that uh, the reason why in my country, Ghana, we still have some uh, cases of AIDS, HIV AIDS is that because the cure is expensive and it is really not existing. People fear to go to take the test, the, the screening in the first place. And so if you're going to have the same situation here where it is so expensive to cure hepatitis C, for instance, then you might not, uh, we might not be able to really target eradication because we have people having it and having the fear to even come and do the screening because they don't want to go panicking. If I go test and I realize that I have it and I don't have any cure, I'm going to die faster than I didn't know it at all. And so I think that we have to look at uh, having to uh, find a cure, fund the curing, and if that is in place, then we can move on. Uh, to the advocacy and the screening. Thank you. Yeah, just, just to say, I, I think part of the solution there is what I was mentioning about working with governments and ministries of health to identify in each country what is the process for providing treatment when we know people are ill. And so it's going to be different, obviously, in every country. So in Gabon or wherever in the world we are, we need to know what the Ministry of Health has to provide in terms of the treatment. And, and if the money is not there, how can we help? Or how can we get the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to help and identify on a country by country basis? In Gabon, we know that the rate of disease is this.
cost of treatment is this, now help us raise the money. So absolutely right. Sanjay Deshpande again. Just want to clarify. Just want to clarify from what I know from the American Labor Foundation that there's no vaccine for hepatitis C, but there is a cure. So let us not have the impression that we can do what we did for polio by giving vaccines. That's not possible, but it can be cured. Maybe someday there will be a vaccine, but today there is no vaccine. Okay. I also believe that hepatitis C is the silent killer because there are no symptoms, you don't know, and Humberto is a good example of that. Hepatitis B, on the other hand, there are some symptoms, and there's also potential vaccines. People can be given vaccines, so we should separate the two. I think hepatitis C is the silent killer. That has to be the focus that can certainly be cured. Expensive, but pressure from communities, countries can bring the cost down, as Humberto has said. So I think that should be our first focus and then go to be if A is something that the body fights off anyway with some treatment. So I think that that clarity should be there, that there is no vaccine for C. Because otherwise people will have all sorts. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I was quick to come to answer that one. Was, that was a very good question and uh, come from somebody who really um, yeah, seems to know about that. Uh, about the situation. Yeah, in fact, there is no approved vaccine for hepatitis C, but there are vaccines already efficient for hepatitis C. So that's why we're targeting the eradication. Because I myself, I went to talk to the person who first uh, isolated the hepatitis C virus, a scientist that works in Canada, a British uh, scientist called Michael Houghton. And not only he has uh, isolated the virus and kept the world, the whole world from uh, being infected, because after his isolation, his discovery, all of the blood banks in the world started uh, screening the blood before giving it to people. But now, Dr. Michael Houghton has discovered a very promising vaccine to, uh, to actually keep the infection of uh, hepatitis C viruses. So we, we, we can already say that there are vaccines, his and some other half a dozen, but you know, it takes time for the FDA to approve. Now, the, the beauty, if we can put it this way, I mean, the satisfaction that we get by doing what we, we've been doing is that when we target an eradication, when we put it as a goal, obviously, it's something enormous. The world is 7.5 billion people. If we are talking about $10 per head, they're eradicating. We're talking about 70 today. 70 billion people to eradicate the whole world against the disease. But the thing is, the process, the campaigns on the way, the road to the eradication is made of each and every individual that we find. Individuals like me, individuals like so many people that we know that are in a group of a hundred and we go and identify that one percent. So the road to eradication may be called a utopia, but it's made of lives that we save. And how much is our life worth? Right? So uh, we may not ever, ever eradicate the disease, but we are going to save thousands and thousands of lives, millions of them, with the protection and help of God. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Maina Azimio. I'm a Rotarian from, uh, from Kenya. Our district is 9212. <clears throat> I, joined, uh, I learned about hepatitis in uh, Sao Paulo and became the face of uh, hepatitis in Kenya and the region. And I can say that uh, a lot has been happening on the ground. And so far, when uh, I went back in uh, 2015 to Nairobi and started talking about hepatitis, I realized that uh, the medics in Kenya did not even send do the test for hepatitis because it was not much known. But after raising the awareness, nowadays when they send, they do test for hepatitis, 
in fact, is very serious because during the hepatitis day in uh, July last year, 18, uh, the Minister of Health released data that uh, we have got about 30% cases of uh, hepatitis from the one which has been tested. I have been involved in campaigns and uh, recruiting people to help in uh, sensitizing people through the great places like churches and mosques, in schools, and everywhere people are meeting. And the response is very good. The only problem is you have already proved a case is positive. What is the treatment? Because the, our, our research on, uh, on, on human diseases have done very good work. When in 2015 and 2016, when we were in Korea, there was a process which was being done to reduce the cost of testing. It used to be about between uh, 100 to $150. But I can, I'm happy to report that uh, now we've come up with a process of testing, which is costing about only $20. So that has been a very big improvement on testing alone. But now the treatment. I want to request that uh, we have, but now that uh, we have a CEO who has uh, the capacity to mobilize things, you can lobby governments and you lobby the drug manufacturers so that they come with a proper treatments. The process which have been done, you quicken the process of having them approved and registered so that we have got clear mechanism. You've been tested in this area, you've been positive, then the treatment is coming from this other side. Now the problem is that you have discovered, yes, I'm positive. What do you do next? It becomes very distressing for us when you're campaigning, people that come and get tested, but after you're tested, you do not have a clear way of, of treating the people. So I would request that, uh, because our clubs in Nairobi and in Kenya, they are very much willing to take over the, the, the campaign. And most of them are actually willing to do it because the statistics are very distressing. So I want to thank you for the effort that you are making and request that uh, way forward. We try to see how we can get the cure. In the corporate world in Kenya, we have tried and uh, most of the corporate organizations are willing to donate some money. But we do not want you to coordinate for us so that it becomes more aware from a coordination point of hepatitis such that uh, when we go to the big corporate organization in our country and send them that uh, we are doing this ABCD, can you donate some money so that they can be able to fund this process? Then do it once the process has come in from the coordination committee. And otherwise, the process is very good so far, and the only problem we are having is on treatment. Once that is sorted out, we are good to go. Thank you. We are going to do our best, always, to be acting on one side with um, diagnosis, diagnostics, and on the other side with the treatment too, and obviously uh, uh, to um, cure, treat and cure the, the, the patients. Uh, and our intention is to create the short circuit, is to, to create the noise, because no government in the world would come with some money beforehand just estimating things. They need to see that the situation is ugly, that is there. So they would come with the money. So that's why we need the help of our Rotarians here. So let's take the two last questions there and finish. But we can guarantee you that we are going to win this fight starting from the very first countries that we spoke to you about. What we need from you is your engagement, is that you take, you take our course to your clubs and, in, and involve in our global grant projects. So please, if you could. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Peter, I'm uh, currently the president of the uh, Rotary Club, Pranayami Metro South, District 3830 from the Philippines. I just like to share my experience about hepatitis. So it's about hepatitis B. Five years ago, um, I mean, I'm a regular blood donor, but five years ago, I received a letter from Red Cross that uh, I have a, dis a disease in the blood. And uh, I responded about one and a half year because uh, I cannot uh, accept it, you know. And uh, when, I, when, I, when I went to Red Cross, um, I was told that to go to the specialist to see. And when I uh, went to the doctor, I was diagnosed to have hepatitis B. And uh, was given two years to live. Because I felt that uh, during those times, I felt like I was melting down, you know. So he, she recommended me to, to a doctor. 
doctor who specialized in the liver disease. And when I went to the specialist, he told me that hepatitis uh, B is incurable. Uh, which, uh, if I heard it right, you said it earlier, right? Okay. And there is this friend who introduced me uh, uh, to the group of people who are using this uh, ginseng, uh, ginseng extract. Uh, ginseng extract. Okay. Uh, in the Philippines also, uh, hepatitis B is incurable. Doctors will say to you it's, it's, it's incurable. But the, the people, the, the group, that they say it's curable is because of the, the medical records that they are holding. The, 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 there are a list of people who are diagnosed with hepatitis B and uh, after this, after uh, using this uh, extract. No, I'm not promoting anything. No, yes. I, 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 I'm speaking of my personal experience. Right. Well. And uh, because I'm hopeless, I cannot turn to, to a doctor because they say it's secure. Right, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would then that yes, uh, hepatitis C is considered incurable so far because of the lack to an efficient medicine which is a, would be approved already. But in the same case as the vaccine for hepatitis C, there is an efficient medicine that cures completely hepatitis B on the way. So it's just a matter of us. Okay. Maybe two years or something, we'll have it approved by the FDA. And we hear stories uh, like the one you told us. But you know, they all need to be approved by the FDA. That's how uh, science goes. Thank you, sir. But I'm saying this because last year I was clear. I was clear last year. The doctor who, who diagnosed that I have a Mm -hmm. But I need the same doctor who kills me. Right. So I well, then, well, let me uh, uh, check into it. Uh, there is a small percentage of uh, hepatitis B carriers that do get rid of the infections by themselves naturally. So I have my stepfather who had the same experience. I'm Dr. Okay. from uh, India, from Brooklyn of Jalandhar West. I have a few comments that uh, hepatitis C is very common in. Uh, Asian countries and particularly in India. And uh, the two important uh, sectors which we must watch is the drug addicts. It's very, very common that the people are taking the same syringes, using drugs. They should be screened. Secondly, the people with chronic uh, kidney failure who are on dialysis, they get into hepatitis C very, very soon. I, uh, in the Asian countries, while they are on dialysis and with the machines or with the dialyzers or so, they have to be screened. And uh, second part about the treatment, the government of India has taken this project of treating hepatitis C. And in many hospitals in India, now the government is sponsoring this drug. And uh, that that doesn't seem to be very costly as it used to be about uh, two, three years back. Now in Indian currency, that costs around 30,000 rupees in a month. And that has to be taken for about six months or so. So this uh, uh, project, even the, at the government level is being taken and the Rotary Club in India we are promoting that they should take up the screening part, particularly in the renal failure patients. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we'd like to thank you all for having come and please join us in our project and let's grow this project big and let's save lives together. Thank you very much. Thank you.